coming to the classification there are four main classes of diabetes one is type 1 type 2 and diabetes secondary to other etiology which is secondary diabetes and diabetes which occurs in the pregnancy which is called gestational diabetes now coming to the pathophysiology normally pancreas secretes insulin and this insulin goes and acts on the insulin receptor and thereby the glucose which is outside is transported inside the cell for utilization. This is the normal glucose metabolism which happens with secretion of insulin. Let us see what happened with type 1 diabetes mellitus. In type 1, the pancreas which was supposed to secrete the insulin does not produce the insulin. The insulin is not produced from the pancreas. So, there will not be any action on the insulin receptor and the glucose cannot be transported into the cell for utilization. Therefore, hyperglycemia occurs. This is type 1 diabetes mellitus. Coming to type 2, here the pancreas produces the insulin, okay, but the receptors are resistant or the insulin production is little bit lower side. Therefore, the glucose cannot go inside the cell for utilization. Either it produces insulin which is cannot match the sugar which is produced or there might be a peripheral resistance to the insulin receptor. This is type 2. Coming to type 1, it is caused by beta cell destruction of pancreas. There is absolute insulin deficiency. There is no insulin. It can be caused by autoimmune or idiopathic factors. Coming to type 2, here the insulin protection is there, but there is peripheral insulin resistance or a relative insulin deficiency, which means more glucose is produced for the insulin to counter. Coming to secondary diabetes, it can be monogenic diabetic syndrome like maturity onset diabetes in the young or neonatal diabetes, disease of the exocrine pancreas like pancreatitis, neoplasm, cystic fibrosis or pancreatectomy. Your pancreas is removed by surgery, endocrinopathy, Cushing syndrome, acromegaly or pheochromocytoma, drug induced or chemical diabetes. Here you have thiazide diuretics, steroids, nicotinic acid and beta adrogenic agonist. Infection, cytomegalovirus, congenital lobella, and genetic syndromes like Down syndrome, Klinefelter syndrome, myotonic dystrophy, and Frederick ataxia. Now, coming to gestational diabetes, here the placenta produces hormone estrogen, cortisol, and HPL, human placental lactogen, which counters the action of insulin, thereby, glucose in the blood is high. You have hyperglycemia. Why this types of diabetes is very important? Type 1, that is absolute insulin deficiency, has a higher incidence of both hyperglycemia as well as hypoglycemia than type 2. And another important thing is different physiology and disease process between type 1 and type 2 is poorly appreciated at the clinical liver. This might have widespread clinical implication in the perioperative period. You can't treat type 1 and type 2 as similar in the perioperative period. So, you have to know the clear perioperative pathway to safely manage the patient in the perioperative period. The instance of gestational diabetes, that is diabetes in the pregnancy and other types of diabetes are much lower than type 1 and type 2 and patient with pancreatogenic diabetes are more unstable in the perioperative period compared with pregnancy and steroid induced diabetes. Now, coming to the criteria to diagnose diabetes mellitus. The first and foremost is HbA1c greater than 6.5 percent. Your fasting blood sugar value is greater than 120 milligram per deciliter. Here, the fasting should be at least 8 hours. The postperandial sugar at after 2 hours greater than 200 milligram per deciliter and your random sugar greater than 200 milligram per deciliter in a patient with 
classical symptoms of hyperglycemia. These are the four criteria to say patient has diabetes mellitus.